welcome to the Big Bang. In today's programme, the strange but true story of Hubert Cecil Booth and his amazing vacuum suction machine. Prepare to fire. We'll show you how to make these terrific battleships and then sink them. And today's big question, where would you go to visit your most distant relative? But first, a trick. Gareth, can you pick up five bags of pasta with only one hand? Yeah, yeah, easy for a guy with great big spade like bass player hands like me. Well, right? that's what you think. It's just a matter of. Hang on, I've got three. No, hang on. Give it up. Come Four. On. <laughs> and are you allowed, right, to use one hand and hold them against your body? No, you're not. Look, come right. here. <laughs> the secret is in the stacking. What you do is stack them very carefully. In fact, this is a trick that builders use on building sites to carry five bricks. You stack them, then you put your hand through and... Fantastic! Hey, just think of the money we'll save you having to buy shopping bags now. I've got a trick for you. Right. Here's a coin mm -hmm. balanced on its edge with a matchstick balanced on top of the coin. Your challenge is to move the matchstick off the coin without disturbing the coin. That's easy. I just blow and... Ah, that's not fair. Mm, tricky, isn't it? Can I touch the glass? No, you can't touch the glass. Can I use any other gadget or item? You can use whatever you can find here in our flat, if you think it'll help. OK, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> There's a good solution to this, and I'll show you at the end of the programme. I can hear you thinking. <laughs> something you can make from your old tin cans. But make sure you find someone who's good with a tin opener to help you. making musical instruments out of soup cans. They're called bongo boobams, and if you bang them on the carpet with the open side up, they make an amazing sound. Now, the more cans you add, the lower the note, and if you double the number of cans, you can go down an octave. So, if you choose your lengths carefully, you should be able to get a scale. OK, I'm the low one, so I'll do the rhythm, OK? OK, cool. of becoming an inventor. And inventing a machine so great that everyone wants one. Making you rich beyond your wildest dreams and famous. Well, this is a strange but true story of an invention that cleaned up everywhere. The humble vacuum cleaner! A <laughs> hundred years ago, Cleaning was a very dirty business, but engineer Hubert Cecil Booth was determined to beat the problem once and for all. Oh, this is no good. I'm just making more mess. Oh. Back in those days, the only way to clean something was to blow, sweep or knock the dirt off it. Booth's great idea was to suck instead of blow. Oh. Hubert 
Robert invented a suction machine and the vacuum cleaning company was born. I'm going to make a fortune out of other people's dirt. <laughs> His machine was too big to get through most people's front doors, so he had to leave it outside while he did his cleaning. The only trouble was the din. People nicknamed it the Noisy Serpent. What do you say, love? I'm sorry, you'll have to speak up. I can't hear you. Meanwhile, over at the palace, King Edward was checking out the throne room. One decrees this throne room to be filthy. Send for that newfangled cleaning machine. Hubert Cecil Booth to the rescue, Your Majesty. Edward was well impressed with Hubert's machine and gave it the royal seal of approval. Really, one isn't anyone unless one has got one. So far, so good. But sadly, Booth didn't make his fortune with his vacuum cleaner because even really great inventions can always be made better. Uh, pardon me, your Royal British highness ness 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 ness, -ness but uh, isn't your suction machine, like, totally cumbersome? And who might you be? J. Murray Spangler, sir. And what might that be? Ah, this is my uh, new design for a compact, upright, Vacuum cleaner. Spangler had come up with a much better design, but he didn't make his fortune either because he sold his idea to a man called... Hoover. That's all I ever do. W.H. Hoover, to be precise. He was a clever businessman who bought Spangler's idea and made millions. People started calling the vacuum cleaner the Hoover and instead of doing the cleaning, they were doing the hoovering. So, if Mr Spangler hadn't have sold his design to Mr Hoover, the vacuum cleaner would be called the Spangler, and I would be doing the Spanglering. Except you're not, are you? Come on, you've missed a bit under my feet. Come on, Gareth. going to get you, evil yellow navy. Ah, come on, the silver navy. I'll sink all of your battleships. <laughs> not so far, ah, you evil admiral. Nearly got you. You've got one. And... Yes, got it. This is our game of battleships. It's fantastic. All you have to do is sink the battleships with tiddlywinks. The ships are really easy to make. They're almost entirely constructed out of a silver foil tray. You can buy them in supermarkets or get your takeaways in them. What you have to do is cut a ship shape out of the bottom of the tray and then punch in with a hole punch four holes. But these are going to help the ships sink later on and help the game. Next, you need to cut little slits all the way around the edge of the ship shape. That'll allow you to pull them all up as flaps. Then with some waterproof glue around the flaps and a couple more bits of a silver foil tray, the ship will have some sides. And when that's stuck properly, you'll end up with a very elegant hull of your ship. A cabin's needed next, and this is just more silver foil tray with the right folds. It's an upside down kind of U shape. And when you've done that, you can slit it in as the cabin. And what do we need? We need a funnel and a mast. The funnel is just a coil of silver foil again, and the mast, or oh, the only bit that isn't made out of silver foil, a cocktail stick. And there we have it. I think she's rather beautiful. You can make your own design, of course, as well, but if you want to copy this exact design, check out our webpage, there's a pattern on it. Now, these ships do float beautifully, despite the fact that they've got holes in their hull. Now, they don't sink because of something called surface tension. It's almost as if the water has got a skin on the surface. If you look, you can see the water bulging through the hull, but it can't quite get through. However, if you knock the ship, it starts taking on water because you've broken that skin. Eventually, it takes on so much water that it stops being buoyant and sinks gracefully down to Davy Jones's locker. Oh, it's a sad sight seeing a ship go down. Yeah, especially when it's mine. <laughs> Shouldn't take more than a few tiddlywinks to sink a battleship, but try and be as accurate as you can, because last one afloat's the winner. Come on then, Gareth. Fire! I'm going to get you back for that. Oh, oh got yes. one. Oh, crap. 
Yeah. Oh. Fire abroad, so I just wait to bring me depth charges and me submarine. Oh. <laughs> Chimpanzees. They're intelligent, sociable, and can even use tools. In fact, they're a lot like us. Not surprising, really, because if you go back far enough up your family tree, you'll find we're related. But they're not our most distant relatives, not by a long way. Today's big question is, where do you have to go to visit your most distant relatives? These are lemurs. They're much less related to us than chimps are, but they're still mammals. They've got fur, like us, well, hair. They give birth to live animals, like us. And they suckle their babies, like us. But, unlike us, they have these rather elegant tails which they use for communication and protection. They're much further up the line than chimps are, but they're still not our most distant relatives. Humans and birds went their separate ways a long time ago. But they're still quite like us. They make their own heat, just as we do. They breathe air, just like us, and they even have five toes, just like us. But they're not mammals, unlike us. They've got feathers, not fur. And their young pop out in these things, baby survival pods. A much more distant relative of ours is the starfish. They may look like aliens, but like us, they can have identical twins. But unlike us, they don't have a backbone. They don't make their own warmth. They don't breathe air. They breathe water. They don't seem to have eyelids. They don't have ears. They don't seem to have a head either. But they're still not our most distant relative. Not by a long way. Earthworms. They're so far back along our family tree that they don't even split into boys and girls. In fact, every earthworm is both a boy and a girl. Aren't you, sir? Madam? But the earthworm is by no means our most distant relative. Oh, no, not by a long way. Behold, one of our most distant relatives. Hey? Eh? No, not the bread, the yeast inside it that helps to make it rise. You see, yeast is a fungus. It's as alive as you or me. Or it was until it was baked to death. What's even further back along your family tree than yeast? Bacteria. They're so small and so simple, it's hard to imagine that we're related. But we are. But bacteria are everywhere, especially in warm, dark, damp places. Like in your stomach and lower intestine. Yes, we are just full of bacteria. So, where do you have to go to visit your most distant relative? Nowhere. Just stay right at home. They're already here. I see you're still having no luck with my trick then, and you found my tuba. Gareth, I have tried absolutely everything in the flat, and I cannot knock that matchstick off that coin without touching the glass. You may have tried everything in the flat, but you haven't tried this balloon, have you? Balloon? Yeah, turn around, I want to give you a back rub. OK. Oh, I know what you're doing. You are charging up that balloon with static. For ah. what? I don't know. But... Ah. Well, because <laughs> static electricity attracts everything. But it only moves very light objects. Like that match. Exactly. That was brilliant. In fact, it was so brilliant that I wonder if you can match it with Bongo Boo Bam playing. Oh, yeah, I've got 11 GCSEs in playing these things. Come on, then. Yeah. 